This lecture by Trigueirinho, which is being presented with simultaneous translation into English, was recorded live in Brazil in December 2002. Uma pessoa coloca aqui uma pergunta sobre a liberdade pessoal, a liberdade possível. Someone has handed in a question diz, about personal freedom, asking what kind of freedom is possible. O livre arbítrio é visto como sinônimo de liberdade. And she says, in traditional negar Western thought, free will is seen to be é synonymous with freedom. A liberdade do ser humano is not denying free will the same as denying the freedom possível. of human beings. What kind of freedom is possible? O livre arbítrio, que é uma, um direito das pessoas, o livre arbítrio não é sinônimo de liberdade. Free will, which is a person's right, é um, is not the same é um as freedom. Que existe para as pessoas mentais. Free will Nenhuma is a gift that exists for mental people. Se baseia no livre arbítrio. No one who is então, truly spiritual ever bases himself or herself on free will. Mental people are the ones who é um use free will openly. As pessoas mentais de escolher. And free will Mas is a right that mental people have to make choices. Porque o que a gente escolhe mentalmente nem sempre dá o resultado que nós queremos. But free will does not então, represent freedom because that which we choose mentally does not always produce the desired results. Mas so we have a goal and we use free will to reach it. But there is no guarantee that we will get there through the use of free will. Because free will only guarantees a positive result when you make choices within the laws. But if you choose something through free will that is outside of the laws, there is no guarantee that things will take place as you intended. So free will is mental and does not guarantee that you are going to arrive where you want to go. You will attain what you ought to attain when you know that you have free will to make the choices you want. Nevertheless, you still consult your inner self. You ask your inner self. You look for guidance from your inner self. Você está usando o livre arbítrio. Now, when you decide to seek within yourself, interior, you are using não. free will. Então, se você decide buscar no seu interior, você está usando o livre arbítrio. Because you can either então, seek guidance within or not. So, when you decide é to look inward, you are using free will. Formas. Isso então é so um it is a way of using free will, which Agora, is more correct é than other ways. This, then, is one point of this issue. Now, how much freedom is possible? If free will gives us absolutely no guarantee of freedom, then, in many cases, by using free will, you are even more enslaved than you were before, and you know very well what is being referred to here. Then what kind of freedom is possible? When is it that we are free? Is it possible for us to be free? As human beings, no. As human people, no. As human beings, no. Das energias, das energias Unless, das energias as individuals, we begin um to take part in cosmic as energies, energies, universal energies, um which have a rhythm. As energies, têm um plano. energies, energies follow a plan of evolution. Um the energies have a plan. And the energies have an intrinsic cadence in order to manifest this plan. So if you decide to participate in the cadence of the energies, 
If you choose this using your free will, you end up making contact with and participating in the movement and therefore the work of the energies. Seven energies work, manifest and develop on the material level, the level of manifestation. So here on the level of manifestation, on this material level, through free will you can choose to work with those energies, to take part in the work of those energies. Aqui no plano externo, no plano da manifestação, so if você you begin to participate in the work of these seven energies, here on the external level, on the level of manifestation, you are engaged in a significant achievement. For you are creating, you are cooperating with energies that are developing a plan of evolution and that have an intelligent plan of development. No mundo material, são a energia da vontade, a energia do amor. And these seven energies that work here on the external level in the material world are the energy of will, the energy of love, of intelligent action, of harmony, of science, of devotion, and of order. All of these are energies, and we work with them, sometimes with all of them together, and often more intensively with one or other of them. We do not always work with all seven energies to the same degree. We can have more affinity with one than with the others. So we begin to work with and to act in unity with spiritual will, love wisdom, activity, harmony, science, devotion or order according to our affinity with those energies. Some people begin with devotion, others begin with love, others begin with order, or they begin with more than one energy according to their own affinity. And here, by seeking within, by petitioning within for things to take place according to the plan of the energies, according to the will of these energies, our external world then gradually comes into balance. It gradually becomes harmonious, full of love, orderly, devotional, intelligent, and also quite real because it is based on the energy of science. It is also based on this quest for reality within matter. Nós escolhemos funcionar em colaboração com esta energia, com estas sete energias. So with our free will, we choose to act in cooperation with this energy, with these seven energies. We ask inwardly for this to take place. We turn inward. All of this is done using free will. We choose this or we choose something else. So free will is useful for this, to put you within a reality that is in touch with these energies because you have chosen to do so, a reality that is in contact with these energies. Please notice that so far nothing has been said about freedom. Nothing has been said about liberation because this will come further on. So through free will, you choose this path, you choose to cooperate with intelligent energies rather than with forces of matter that interact, build and destroy, but are not intelligent. So by your asking within yourself which is your path and what those energies are, things are going to begin to happen or things are going to become clear you are going to begin to feel a predisposition and light to gradually be able to live cooperating with the energy, the creative energy. One has to really experience, to really live this in order to know what it is. 
com estas sete energias, quando nós já estamos colaborando Now, when we have already com a made a relatively stable espírito, contact and have a relatively stable cooperation with these seven energies, when we are already cooperating with the will of spirit, which comes from within us, it flows with it from within us, when we are already quite closely linked with love wisdom, which also flows from within us, all we have to do is ask, all we have to do is seek, and it begins to come forth, it begins to blossom. And this is true of intelligent activity and of the other energies. When you are quite united with and are cooperating with these energies, and this not, need not be in a perfect way, but in a fairly decisive way, at this point you begin to dedicate yourself to cooperate with another five energies. Only these other five are not manifested in a material way here, such as can happen with will, love, activity, harmony, science, devotion, and order. All of these are manifested here in material life, on the material level. All of these have an external manifestation. One can see these energies being manifested here in external life. The other five are not manifested here. The other five are not material energies. The other five are non-material. And we gradually contact these energies when we aspire to them, when we desire them, when we are open to them. And in so far as we collaborate with the seven that work here, because all manifestation, all of that which is manifested, all that is externalized, all that exists, is the work of these seven energies. So you have to begin cooperating with these seven energies so that then you may be able to cooperate with the others, which are subtle which are completely inward and which bring about inner results or produce inner states, such as the interrelationship among levels of consciousness, among universes, among civilizations. Can you see how at this point a greater freedom begins, freedom from a closed material mental circle? So there is an energy, which is the eighth ray, also called eighth ray, which begins to develop in you, which begins to act, to live within you, and you then begin to participate in this interconnectedness between levels of consciousness. And in this way you begin to get free from this somewhat closed and restricted situation here of the material world, of the world of the seven material energies. Another non-material energy also begins to develop, and this is the energy of omnipresence. You begin to perceive that energy is omnipresent, and if you begin to participate in this ray, in this omnipresence, or this ninth ray, you begin to feel less limited. You begin to make contact with or to feel more present in situations that are not really close by, that are not quite material. So even without being conscious of how this takes place, you begin to participate in things that are happening at a distance, quite far away, even on the other side of the planet, even on other planets, even in other worlds. And you are there, present, participating and living all that quite consciously. So it is important for us to be open to these other energies, these non-material energies. profundamente, 
And then we have the energy of transfiguration, which is also non-material. This energy gradually transforms you deeply, so deeply that your being becomes transfigured. This means that your being no longer manifests that external figure that was seen in the beginning, the figure that began the evolutionary process. And it becomes transfigured, it begins to express, it begins to take the form, it begins to transmit things of the new being, things of the inner being. So the energy of transfiguration, this tenth ray, this tenth energy that is non-material, this gradually causes your being your inner dimension to emerge, to become manifested. And in this way it transfigures your former being, it deeply transforms that which you always have been. And then another energy also present on the inner levels is omniscience. Because you do not have to be limited to the things you were taught, or you do not have to be limited to the things that begin to emerge from within you. There is a greater science. There is a total science. There is a universal science, a universal knowledge. So this begins to surface, it begins to emerge, and you begin to take part in this. This energy is not material. So omniscience, this possibility of knowing anything, or of knowing in a universal way, is accessible. A décima segunda energia, que é a energia da libertação. By living these energies and by our contact with these energies, the twelfth energy arises, which is the energy of liberation. Você começando a viver. So when you cooperate with all of these energies, with the seven energies that operate on the material level, and when you begin to live the other five, the result of all this is liberation comes about. You become freed from this play of energies and you become liberated of all of this and you begin to enter into contact with greater energies, with even higher energies, which are beyond this state of liberation. So it is another life. It is a life on another level, really on a cosmic level. But we are not going to experience liberation through using free will. By using our free will, we could confine ourselves even more than before. Free will is a school for us to learn how to make choices and finally to surrender ourselves to a higher will. This is far beyond our mental level. This is what free will is for. So, by surrendering ourselves to this higher will, which is far beyond our mental level, we gradually get to know these other energies until we reach this twelfth ray, which is non-material and cosmic, and which is called liberation. This means that liberation develops a path, it carries out a process that goes beyond all of the energies known so far. So the energies that we know and which we cooperate with gradually mature us and they become synthesized and transformed into liberation. This is a process that one goes through. So when we work with these energies here on the material level, when we work with will, love, wisdom, intelligent activity, harmony, science, devotion and order, inspired by our inner self, when we seek our inner self, we find that we begin to participate in groups. 
but not these groups that are here. We begin to participate in groups on the inner level, in the inner world. Then we really begin to learn things. So then we really begin to function inwardly. Grupos de desenvolvimento de amor, desenvolvimento fraterno, grupos de atividade de diferentes tipos. So all the groups of all the different sectors, discipline groups, groups for the development of love, for the development of brotherhood, activity groups of different types, groups that try to attain harmony, such as those of music or art, groups pursuing science, such as medicine, psychology, research, groups that seek devotion through a religion, and groups that seek order, that strive for a more orderly process of creation. All of this that has been studied here, that has been sought here, at a certain point, all this moves into an inner level, and we will find the inner groups that correspond to those groups we experience here. Except that on the inner level, they are all much broader. Study becomes much broader because the study is done by souls. The study is carried out by the inner beings. It is the science of inner beings. It is inner healing. It is not like the healing here, the healing of the body. In the inner groups, in inner life, it is inner healing. It is not the inner healing of only the body. It is the healing that deals with the spirit, with the soul, as well as with the body, and not exclusively with the body. But for you to reach the inner groups of inner healing, or for you to begin to work on inner healing, beyond bodily healing, beyond medical healing, beyond medicine, you have to develop these seven energies. A doctor is not only the energy of science, scientific energy, the fifth ray. Within the fifth ray alone, people become doctors. They are within medicine. But for them to expand this medicine, for them to expand this capacity for healing, for them to expand all that medicine is today, they would also have to be within the other rays. They would have to seek the other rays as well in order to begin to work with inner healing so that through inner groups or inner life they may begin to heal people completely. Because when you cure the physical body, you have not healed to the person, you have removed an illness or you have temporarily solved some illness. Because all that occurs in the physical body related to disharmony and illness stems from a lack of inner healing. So medical doctors who limit themselves to the physical body are rendering great service, but are very limited, because they could be also participating in inner healing. When the disease se manifesta, the problem is not in the body. And in inner healing, on the inner level, they could really solve the problem of that body. When the illness becomes manifested, the problem is not in the body. It is not in the presumed reason for the manifestation of an illness. The cause is in the person's inner world. The cause stems from the lack of interconnection between the person and his or her soul. It is either an illness that took place due to a lack of unity between the external person and the soul, or it may be an illness that appeared because of the lack of unity between the soul and spirit, which is something much deeper. So inner healing is indispensable in order to treat someone here because without inner healing we become very limited or we are unable to know what to do in certain cases. You have seen that you may have treated someone and relieved many illnesses. The person may become clinically healthy, but he or she continues to be ill. The person continues having the same old habits, the same fixations, the same ideas, the same prejudices. The person continues to be ill. This is very important that we have present, because 
é aí que a medicina se desenvolve. So é healing que has to continue. Começa a se desenvolver. Agora, healing needs to be carried on. Para healing has to go deeper. It is very important formal, for us to be aware of all this because this is how medicine develops. It is at this point that inner healing begins to develop. Now there is a medical school, there is a formal school for you to become a medical doctor, for you to treat bodies, but there is no formal school for this. Outside of medical school, there is no other formal school. Here it is a question of applying your will to that which you developed with it within the material rays, you apply love, love for health, love for beauty, love for harmony, love for service, love for order, love for devotion, love for science. You need to love all of this. This is the energy of the second ray. This is love wisdom. For you to heal, to treat whomever. So this is love. It is love in science. Not the science that only treats someone who can pay or the science that only treats whomever it wants to treat. No. Science has to treat everyone. You have to treat everyone. You have to become freed from so many professional prejudices and begin to extend your capacity to serve, your capacity to heal, your capacity to treat, your capacity to give medical aid, regardless of whether you are paid or not, or whether you have or do not have facilities. So there must be receptivity here. There has to be an application of all the material rays so that you may then begin to enter the world of inner healing. No one pays to enter this world. There is no course taken to enter it. There is no professor to teach it. But there is this love. Do everything with love. Apply science with love. Do all with love. Live with love. Live through love. Not love for one or other person. Not love for this or for that. Love for its own sake. Love for all things. Love for the quest itself. So all of this is to be lived. These rays are to be lived. And the work of inner healing then begins to happen. And inner healing gradually takes place within the being. It is not controllable. First of all, it takes place within you, because for you to be an instrument of inner healing, you have to have been inwardly healed. That is to say, your mind, your feelings, your activity should already be serving your soul. They should already be serving your high self because the energy of healing is in the high self so you have to have already surrendered yourself you have to already be receptive responsive to what comes from this higher level of consciousness and one of the first things that begins to descend is the quality of a healer it is the energy of healing but in principle, this energy of healing is inner healing. It is an energy that is going to help people to begin to get in touch with their inner worlds, to gradually perceive the will of their being, to begin to feel how much they are loved by their inner being. When we begin to feel how much we are loved by our inner being, we are going to look at love as it is expressed here, this human love, in a different way. We are actually going to feel sorry for those who look for love here when we begin to feel how loved we are. And, but not loved by any person, loved within, loved by our inner being. So here people begin to be healed when they are loved, when their inner being begins to radiate and they begin to feel that which comes from within themselves. This is the first healing which they experience, this healing of a need for love. So you see, a doctor must be very much aware of this because when a patient arrives who is ill because of a lack of love, the doctor has to transmit this energy to this person. 
But doctors are only going to be able to transmit this energy through what they say, through what they do, through the surgery they perform, through the treatment they apply, through dialogue. They can only transmit this love to the person through all of this, if they themselves are living this, if they have already experienced this healing coming from love. So this healing begins within us, and then it grows, it emanates, it is passed on, and so a work of healing begins to take place that is much greater than what is already being done. So besides attending to our own healing, in other words, seeking and wanting, being receptive to our own inner context with our inner self, with our soul, we need to be willing, in first place, to deal with our better side and not be on the side in us which is ill. And if we are dealing with our better side, if we are seeking, if we are focusing on our better side, at this point the part of us which is ill gradually becomes devitalized or is gradually resolved. The part of us which is ill does not disappear when we attack it. Never even think of attacking an illness. Take care of the better side of your being. Then you will perceive the better part of the patient. You will notice the foremost quality of the patient that will help the person develop those qualities, help the person apply those qualities. So with each patient who comes to you, if you do not look at the illness, but rather at the person's qualities, and you help him or her to express those qualities, that patient is going to become one of your collaborators. So you will begin to draw together collaborators and not patients who are ill. You will begin to draw collaborators and those beings will gradually become healed. They will gradually change their state of being to the extent that they begin to express their better qualities. And you know that there are doctors who follow this path. And they founded things. They set up centers where people can go to work and develop. They founded development centers. They did not limit themselves to individual work, which is also very important, and someone must carry it out. But you must not restrict yourself to the work that is individual, that is one-on-one. -on -one. There is so much need, so many people are unwell, there are so many beings with so many undiscovered qualities. Instead of working with only one, why not work with many? I knew someone who used to say, see here, since you are pulling one wagon, why don't you pull a whole train? Since you are pulling one wagon, hook on a few more wagons and pull them all together. Do you see what this philosophy is? Let us perceive the better part and let us count on the better part, both of our patients and of ourselves or of the group. Let us rely on the better part because if this part begins to be applied, if it begins to be developed, the part that is ill begins to work itself out. The part that is ill then begins to withdraw or begins to be transformed. It begins to be transmuted. It begins to be liberated because we are the ones who hold on to illnesses and if we do not change our habits, we cannot get rid of the illness. So all of a sudden, this part can be liberated. Now, when this is well underway, when this is happening smoothly, we can begin to work in a different way. We can begin to vitalize those ideals, those images, our perception of what is healthy, of what is beautiful, of what is useful, of what is good, and apply energy on them with our mind to be really attuned. So let's say, for example, that there is a cure for malaria, or that there is a cure for certain psychological matters. 
de imaginar e de criar, do você not keep focusing on the illness. De cura you do not aquilo. think about the illness through your capacity to imagine and create. Você fica you try to find the source of healing for that. You try to link with the source of healing. You keep trying to find the energy of healing. What is the healing for this? What do I have to find to help this person? You are not treating the person's illness. The illness is simply the starting point from which you can attune to a source of knowledge that would help the situation. Where am I going to find the healing for this? I know someone who has already discovered over 300 medications and he did not do this by keeping his mind focused upon research. His mind was looking for the source of healing, for that which came to him to be healed. So a person would come to him and would talk and talk and talk and he would examine the person and he would see what point the person was, that he would put that aside and he would ask, where is the source of healing? And it would come, the medication would come, a procedure would come. Do you see how it works? So you go to the healthy part, you go to the creative part, you seek that which is elevated, which is evolved in order to gradually make it present here. Evidently, after that, there will be plenty of time and there will be plenty of energy for you to bring forward here what you discovered over there. So here is where the material part of the procedure begins. But the material part is not the research itself. The research is on the other level. Afterwards, it comes down and is applied here through herbs, through minerals, through plants, through products. It is applied here in this way, but it is a change in consciousness. It is a change of direction in our methods. Estar fazendo isso tudo pelo outro, Now, não por si, the two last things for you to know. Tudo, you are doing all of this for the other person, not for yourself. Um you are médico, not doing all of this to become a scientist or a great medicina. doctor or tudo to be é rich escuro, by selling medications. É this is tudo all é spurious. All of this is regular medicine. Está sendo feito em função do outro. This is em how it's done on earth. All what you are doing is done for the good of the other, for the good of the one in need, in response to a need, as a service to a need. Because through this you begin to learn to deal with your own need and with the need of your collaborators. Otherwise you work all day long just to fill needs that are unreal, needs that could have been filled in another way. And you go on practicing medicine in order to attend to something which is not even a need something which could be attended in a different way if transformation were to take place. So you have to try to discover the real need. The real need may not be what appears before our eyes. The real cause is to be found beneath that. So you need to know what the real need is and how you are going to fill this need. But here you are taking care of the other person. What is his or her need? What is the need this person has which has to be healed? What is the need this person has? Not your need to be fulfilled as a doctor or as a therapist or as a householder. Not this need of yours, but the need of the other person. There, where the need is, that is what has to be attended to. Insofar as you disregard or forget or give minor importance to or have faith that your need will be filled and you are really focused on the need of the other person, a great transformation will begin to take place in you as an individual and your field of action will gradually expand. And so individuals would have to keep centered on this work. 
they would have to keep focused on that intention, not lose sight of that intention, not let themselves become distracted or keep that distraction to the minimum possible. So when moments arrive in regular medicine, in regular life that begin to put pressure on you, you have to be careful not to lose that center, not to move away from that intention. And if you let things pressure you a little, be careful not to lose this link, because once you lose this link, you have to begin the contact all over again. You have to reconstruct this connection all over again. So if old or past things or current or involutionary things are trying to draw your attention, are coercing you, and by karma you have to or must attend to them, then go ahead and attend to them, but be careful not to lose this thing. Be careful not to lose this something you have vowed to do before you incarnated. Those who are really doctors chose to be doctors before they incarnated. And when they incarnated, they became Doctors, you know that in the past, doctors in the College of Medicine would profess an oath, right? They took an oath very seriously. That oath was not something foolish from the earth. It was not something formal. That oath that was professed by each doctor in the past when he or she completed medical studies was a terrestrial counterpart of something each one had decided to do before being born and had vowed to himself for herself to come and fulfill that. Do you see what the oath of medical doctors was about? So they come to do this. They pledge themselves to this and are born to be doctors. Taking into account the variety of things that life brings us and so many opportunities and options that we have to use free will, and then those greater opportunities that come up. A time comes when we need really to be alone with ourselves. So it's no use thinking that this is the way things are and wanting this or that. If you continue looking only outward, it's useless. You have to have that time in which you put everything aside, even if it's for only a few moments, and you really become present within yourself. You need this. Otherwise, you're not going to move from where you are or you're going to be just, just like everyone else or almost everyone running from here to there without knowing what for. Because in most cases, this does not resolve the things which need to be resolved in a profound way. To resolve means to heal, not to remove anything or to transfer illness from one place to another in the individual. Real healing. So for this to happen, without giving up your customary external formal commitments, without breaking away from external life, you need to find a moment routinely. You need to establish a time in which you are alone, in which to align yourself to remove all thoughts that are not that inner point, that union, to remove all of that and allow yourself to remain still in that center, renewing yourself, recovering, healing yourself, learning. This can happen in seconds, just as it can happen in minutes, some moments, or it can happen over a longer time. You need to find time for this. This is an offering of the self. It is an offering we make to be what we are in medicine or in any other area of life. We become open to this and consider that moment as perhaps one of the most important moments of the day, if not the most important. It could be the shortest, but perhaps it could determine what the whole day will bring. It could determine our whole life. So it needs to be done regularly. It needs to be done with faith. And when you begin to do this, you are going to feel that when you go into that place for a few moments, you become renewed. 
is there things change. The most important thing is that you are constantly changing. And if you are constantly changing, you are always becoming transformed for the better. You are really a therapist. Now, if you are not always becoming transformed for the better, what sort of therapist are you? Because this word therapist, which we use inconsistently, this word therapist does not mean what the dictionary says. This which you are, therapists, this is an energy. It is a rhythm. Therapy, therapist, all this is a rhythm. It is a value that allows you to take care of your own being. So if you are a therapist, you are taking care of your own being. Your being is becoming fulfilled. And when your being is fulfilled, you become a therapist and you will practice therapy. You will help others to become fulfilled. When medicine was founded, these words were a part of medicine and they were the soul of medicine. They represented the meaning of medicine, not what they represent today. But the energy is there. The root of the thing is there. So in today's medicine, this thing is here. It is in the roots, but it is necessary to seek it, not within medicine itself. You need to seek it within yourself. Because if you were born for this, and if you are connected with this, if this is what you came to do, then communicate with your inner self, and there you will become a therapist. It will make you one. You will be the therapist within yourself and then you will begin to work with therapy, with medicine. Uh, I'm emphasizing the word therapy because medicine in itself is very limited. Medicine without therapy only takes care of the body and therapy takes care of the spirit, of the soul. And hence the body is also being treated. The body is being harmonized. And this has to do with doctors also, because doctors were not created to only take care of the body, because illnesses do not begin in the body. So doctors need to go beyond medicine. Doctors need to reach healing, healing within, inner healing. That is where doctors begin to work. It is there that doctors begin. Medicine of the body is the last stage of healing. So let's see if we can connect with this and thus open up for that energy to flow in us which is beyond the seven rays, beyond the seven material energies, so that the other energies, the non-material energies may also begin to flow in us and so that we may able, be able to participate in universal science so that we may really be able to participate in all this transfiguration of beings and that we may live liberation, live free of all of this which limits us, which conditions us, which oppresses us. Therefore, the work of doctors is much broader than we think and the service of healing is almost infinite because healing does not only address the human kingdom. The animal kingdom needs healing and not only by veterinaries. The plant kingdom needs healing, and not only by agronomists. The mineral kingdom needs healing. Some minerals are ill. All the kingdoms need healing. So the work of the healer takes in all these kingdoms. A therapist's work encompasses the human kingdom and part of the animal kingdom, Animals that are already approaching individualization can use a therapist. So we have infinity before us. So we can see that there is a wide path to be followed within us.